big deal to talk to you guys about purity of mind tonight. We're going to call the mind the battlefield. That's, that's what we're going to... We're going to say, when I, when I talk about the battlefield, that's what I'm specifically talking about tonight, is, is about our minds. Because when a war is waged, where do they wage the war? All right, battlefield. Uh, man, this, this is going to be a tough subject to get through if you guys don't even know what a battlefield is. You guys know what a battlefield is, right? Yeah. Okay, like a battlefield. I'm not talking about like Battlefield 4, the video game. I'm talking about like... Like a battlefield, you know? I mean, like a battlefield. Okay, good. I'm glad we got this figured out. What? I'm glad, I'm glad we got this figured out. A battlefield. Thank you for those lights. So, sh- all right, so we're going to be talking about the battlefield and the understanding that the mind is the battlefield, okay? And through this message that we see tonight, and I've got to preach it quickly because you guys are going to be able to get the small groups. We're going to see that war is waged on the mind. There is spiritual warfare, there is mental warfare, and all of this is waged on the battlefield. The battlefield is your mind. The mind is an extremely powerful tool that can be used for both good and evil. Okay, It can be used for either or. Uh, you have good villains, you have bad villains in, in, in different um, comics or different movies or, or, or so forth and so on. Sorry, I had to make this bigger so that way I could... Actually, read it because I don't know. I don't want to wear glasses, but yes, sir. You seem really confused. What didn't make sense? There's no good villain. There's no good villain. Okay, there's a good guy. Okay, you're right. No good villain. Okay, my bad. Erase that. There's villains and then there's good guys. Better. Okay, but there could be like good villains and really, really bad villains. Like if there's a really, really bad villain, there could be a gooder villain than the bad villain. What about that movie? Right? I mean, some of you are like, what? Who is Spider-Man? <laughs> okay, shh. Yes, ma'am. Then there's the guy in the gray area. Yeah. That's more like Batman. He's the gray area guy. Um, I love Batman. I'm just saying. He's the gray area guy. I'm just saying. Shh. Okay, focus, focus, focus. Shh. Listen, guys, this is why our society pours so much money into controlling the influences that you see, controlling what's poured into your mind. Our society does pours tremendous amount of money into advertisement, pours a tremendous amount of money into uh, movies and music, politics. Games. Yeah, games, exactly. There's television, there's music, movies, sports, politics, games. If there's an agenda that somebody wants to push to influence a generation, these are the objects in which they would do that. It's through these specific categories. And it's through influences. And it's through the battlefield of your mind. Satan has done an excellent job at confusing the world and its judgment of what's right and what's wrong. When, when I was growing up and I was y'all's age, maybe a little bit younger, uh, there, there, you didn't see or hear cussing on television. Like, it, it just wasn't there. And, and I'm not that much older than you guys are. Especially in primetime television, you did not see cussing at all. But today on primetime television, you've got cussing, you've got sexual acts, you've got inappropriate just activities altogether, drugs. It's insane to see the influences that you guys are watching and the fact that our world has become so numb to these influences. Where in the generations did it change? With my generation, it was inappropriate. But then 10 years later, it's completely appropriate to be pushing these agendas that are very ungodly. It's a battlefield. The battlefield is your mind. We see in 1 Peter, it says, 1 Peter 5, it says, Stay alert, watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Listen, Peter understood 2,000-something years ago that there was going to be Satan, that there was going to be the devil that was going to be going around influencing, that there was going to be the devil. He was going to be going around prowling, prowling around, trying to devour generations, devour people. This is 2,000 years ago this guy wrote this down. He knew that it was going to be happening. And here we are today. And, and honestly, be honest with me. Do you think a lot of the stuff you guys see on television today is appropriate? I got a question for you. Would you allow your kids to watch it? No. No, no way. I mean, 
Nelly and I talked about wanting to have children, and it was be a couple years or whatever, and it's almost like we're not even gonna put a television in the house. <laughs> I mean, cartoons are terrible, okay? SpongeBob. Look at SpongeBob, no. I, I mean, influence, battlefield, listen, shh. Listen, Satan has done an excellent job at pushing his agenda. And what's his agenda? His, the, the kill, okay. His agenda is to corrupt souls. His agenda is to push his own selfishness. It's to push his own wants. And he's doing everything he can to do that and to wage a war in your minds, in our battlefield, to cause us to not be sure of what's correct and what's incorrect. Most of you said you would not even let your own kids watch some of the stuff that's on television today. My question to you is, would you, or are you allowing yourself to watch that stuff? And why? As a Christ follower, we are called to live a life of purity. We are called to live a life of, of, of holiness, above reproach. I understand that we will never live a perfect life, but we are called to live above what the world sets as a standard. But many of us get blinded, and honestly, we, come, we become just so numb. We become numb to what's going on around us. We become numb to what's on television. Uh, Melanie, uh, likes, Melanie likes to watch The Bachelorette. I watch it with her. It's amazing how numb our society comes to this notion of love. And, and I was watching it, and there's this guy who's got eight girls that he's trying to choose, and he's like making out with every single one of these eight girls. And the only thing in my mind that I can think of is, I would never allow my daughter to watch this show. Because then she could assume and think that it's okay for her boyfriend to be making out with her friends or making out with the girl next door. And some of you look and you're like, what are you talking about? I would never allow that. Well, then, then why are we pushing that agenda? We're confusing and, and slurring the lines of what love is. I see Mary Jane over there chewing out Christian. No. <laughs> I saw that. She looked at me and she said, you better not. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> she just, I'll kill him. I'll put a knife in his throat. No, I'm just kidding. She didn't say that. She didn't say that. <laughs> what? She what? Nothing. Yeah. You better keep that to yourself. Battlefield. We war in our minds. Last week we talked about, shh, we talked about the heart. We talked about where our character comes from, where our passion comes from, where our love comes from, where our desires come from. Last week we talked about, we, we, we talked about the heart and how important the heart is. And, and that's how you choose people to love. That's how you choose to love people. That's how you choose to have passions for something. It's through your heart. But tonight we're going to focus on the mind. And see, the mind is the filter to the heart. The mind is the filter to the heart. How many of you guys make coffee? Okay, okay. You know when you're making coffee, you have like a coffee filter, right? And you put the grains in there and then you pour the coffee in there. They make cake cups. Listen to you kids. I don't even know what coffee grounds look like. I know, I'm just kidding. So well, the reason we have this filter is why? To not let the grains get through into your coffee because when you drink it, you want to feel the grittiness, you want to feel the grains, right? Folters in your cup, that's right. You don't want the folters in your cup. Uh, Folter grains at least. Well, our mind is like this filter. The, the responsibility of our mind is to filter the junk so the junk doesn't go into the heart. That's the responsibility of the mind because the heart tells our mind what to do, but our mind also controls and filters what goes into our heart. And it's important for us to see that. It's important for us to understand that. The mind collects information all day long. All day long it's collecting information. There's shows and movies and music and, and video games you're playing and relationships that you have. Your boyfriend's telling you he loves you, but he doesn't show you by his exp expressions that he loves you. Or your girlfriend. Or th there's, <laughs> I see some of the relationship people laughing about that. <laughs> we got a problem then if we're there. No. Our minds are collecting all of this information to be filtered. To be filtered. Because subconsciously, we're trying to filter things from going into our heart. We're trying to filter these actions from going into our heart. And it's important to understand that the, the mind is an extremely powerful tool and it's an important tool to control. And we can control our minds. The mind is so powerful that one per it, it can make one person be terrified of heights. How many of you guys are afraid of heights? Yeah? So I'm not afraid of heights if I'm climbing in a tree. 
but I'm terrified of heights if I have to go up on a ladder. Yes. It's really weird. It's a mind thing, but like I'm in a tree, I'll go to the top of the highest tree and just be like, ah, 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 like a crazy banshee or something. I'll enjoy it. But if you ask me to climb two stories on a, like an A-frame ladder, I'm freaking out. I'm on top going, uh, uh, you know, like we were in our house putting the crown molding and I'm on like the top of the ladder and that's six God. feet. Give me a break. It's as tall as I am. I'm just like, oh man, like touching the wall. And it's like, come on. You know what I mean? The mind, the mind is powerful enough to make one person terrified of heights, but yet another person to try to find the tallest building they can and jump off of it. Base jump. I mean, yeah, base jumping. The mind is that powerful. Sarah, you got your hands up. Your hands up. Put both your hands up. I like. There we go. Hands are up. I'm afraid of heights. I'm afraid of falling. Don't fall. Exactly. Exactly. That is true Exactly. Exactly. So our mind is powerful. And like I said before, shh, it can be used as a tool for both good and for evil. And that's why it's important for us as believers to live with a pure mind. And live with a pure mind and a pure understanding shh, of Jesus Christ. Because what we put, what we allow to filter through our minds and into our hearts is, is, is going to be who we are. So we need to develop and create a filter. And we need to understand what a biblical filter is. We need to understand what a pure filter is. Again, we're, we're not going to be perfect. Not until we're with Jesus. It's not going to happen. But we have to do our best to create the webs of the filter for our minds to control what's going in and out of our heart. Because your heart is valuable. Your heart is extremely valuable to you as a human being. It's where your passions and your character and your influences, that's where they come from. We see in Genesis 6, 5, it says, The Lord obsessed the extent of the human, or the, the, the Lord observed the extent of the humans, human wickedness on the earth. And he saw that everything they thought or imagined was consistently and totally evil. Listen, this was back in Genesis 6, the beginning of time. God saw that after the human race fell, he saw that it was consistently and continually evil. And this is the same influence that, that happened from the beginning of time till we have today. It's what's influencing the world. It's the media that's trying to influence us. And we have to develop and create webs in our mind, a filter in our minds in order to control what's going into our hearts. And it's so important for us to focus on things that are above. Colossians 3.2 says, think about the things of heaven not the things of earth. The Bible tells us to set your eyes on things above. Why do you think that is? Why do you think we should set our eyes on things above? Because of what? God is above. God is above? Okay. I mean, it's metaphorically, if we were to walk around like this all day, we'd have issues, you know? Like, metaphorically, we were to set our thoughts, our minds on things above. Why? Because the devil's a midget and he can't be <laughs> <laughs> uh, That was good. If you guys are ever afraid of Satan, just imagine him as a midget. <laughs> and for some of you, that might be a problem. You know? But for like, Stephen Schultz over here, would be like, oh, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, all right, sit down, boys. Okay, so seriously, all, all seriousness. You had your hand up. Yeah, because, well, I was thinking, you keep that up, you guys can make me What? Have you ever heard that song by Jason Mraz? Can I keep that up? No. Pretty much no? Because, oh, yeah. Is that a good song, guys? Yes. No, it's a bad song. Okay, keep going. Because, pop, well, I You forgot, okay, he forgot. All right. We need to set our, our thoughts and our eyes on things above. Here's a scenario. If we listen to music that's laced with junk, how do you think our attitudes will be? If it's laced with just cursing, what do you, we're going to curse. We're going to have, we're going to curse easier, okay? Music's laced with degrading of women. What's going to, what is our outlook, men? What's our outlook, boys? Going to be on women? It's going to degrade women? Yeah. You know, I was, um, you guys know who Eminem is, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. He had an interview with 60 Minutes. She had an interview with 60 Minutes. And the interviewer was asking him about, about cussing in his household. You know what he said? He said, I won't cuss in front of my daughter. I won't, I won't cuss in my household. It's not appropriate to cuss 
in, a, in my household. And, and for me, I, I was totally shocked. I was kind of like, excuse me? <laughs> what? <laughs> you said what? But here's a guy that like every uh, blipping second, he's blipping. You know what I mean? Like, but then here's this guy who's like, oh, I won't cuss around my daughter. No way. And you know what his rebuttal was to the reporter? It was that I make music because it's my art. I'm not here to make music to influence anybody. And it's the parents and the individual's responsibility to filter what their kids are listening to. I don't agree with everything that Eminem says, but I definitely agree with that statement that he said. That it's the responsibility of one, the parents, and it's the responsibility of the individual to be filtering what he says. Now, I don't think Eminem should be out there making that type of music, but that's besides the point. The point is, is that the music that we listen to, especially music, it says almost 85% of, of teenagers today have some type of earbugged, earbug, <laughs> you guys have bugs in your ears, some type of earbuds in their ears listening to some type of music. It is so true. We get on the church van, I look back in the rearview mirror, and, there, and there's 15 kids in the church van, and at least, I don't know, 10, 11 of you, you got your, well, you got your, what are those um, beats? The beats. You know, it's funny, when I was a kid, I wanted the smallest earbuds I could get. Now, guys, you guys are like, you know what I mean? It's like, you might as well just been in the 80s and put a boombox on your shoulder, okay? <laughs> the adults are laughing. They know what I'm saying. <laughs> MC Hammer. <laughs> no. um, music is so influential. Shit is. It's so influential. And, and Satan has done an excellent job at, at using that as an influence to distract us. That, that's what it's about, guys. <laughs> All of life, you're going to grow up and you're going to understand this. Adults will agree with me. It's about the distractions that are put in front of you. It's the distractions. It's a distraction with your spouse or it's a distraction with a coworker. It's a distraction on the television. It's a distraction with the, the commercial. It's a distraction to, to pull your focus away from where you should be paying attention. And to pull your focus away what you should be focused on. It's that distraction. And that's what Satan does. He tries his best to distract us. It says it very simply. It says, think about things of heaven, not of earthly things. Pay attention and focus. Be continually thinking of heavenly things, of things of, of heavenly nature. But what Satan does is he tries to come in and knock that out by, by pulling your focus, by influencing your focus onto something different. And that's where we have to say, you know what, Satan, get out of here. All right, Satan, it's time for you to leave. Your little midget move. No. That, that's where we need to realize that. Shh. We need to realize that. That it's just distraction. It's a distraction. Listen, if Satan wanted to hurt you, he first has to get permission from God. Don't be afraid of Satan. Don't be afraid of him. He's just trying to distract you. And for some of us, he's really distracted us really, really well. I had a whole bunch more of that. I'm going to skip it. Romans 8, 5 through 8. You'll get it in small groups. Those, sh listen to this statement. This is powerful. Romans 8, 5 through 8. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's law, and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. Listen, we have a choice. We have a choice. It's very simple. The text says it so well. You are dominated by sinful nature. You will think of sinful things. But if you're controlled by the Holy Spirit, you will have peace. That's what we're all looking for, right? Peace. We want peace. We want fulfillment. We, we want completion. That happens by focusing on the Holy Spirit. That happens by salvation. That happens by pointing our mind and our thoughts to heavenly things. It's by creating a web of a filter that's a godly filter to filter out the junk that Satan is just trying to distract us with. Because it's just distractions. That's all he's trying to do is just distract us. And it's very easy to be distracted. And that's what he's trying to do, is distract us. I don't know, can I say that enough times? We need to put our attention heavenly. Because when we are focused on heavenly things, we are at peace. But when we are focused on sinful, worldly things, we are what? We can't obey, we, we, we can't obey God. We can't obey the law that he has set for us. <laughs> We're at war, and it leads to death. To death. 
We want peace. We don't want death. The mind is a tremendous battlefield. And Satan is trying to wage every war he can on it day in and day out. So how do we protect our minds? How do we protect it? It's by, it's by focusing on scripture. It's by focusing on what God has for us. We see that it's by scripture. It's through the scripture. It's by memorizing scripture. It's by praying but honestly, it's really by memorizing scripture. And that sounds like such a petty thing. It really does. Memorize scripture. Give me a break. It's so important. You know why? Because when you're being tempted, when you're being tried, when you're being challenged, when your distraction is coming, that verse pops into your mind. And before you know it, you're using the word of God to protect yourself as a shield from the distractions that Satan is trying to attack you with. And before you know it, by the time you have finished reciting that verse, either in your mind or in your heart or out loud, that distraction is then gone and pushed away because Satan has to listen and has to obey the word of God. He has to. He has to obey it. And if you have it memorized in your heart, in your mind, as the filter protecting your heart, there is no way Satan will penetrate your heart. Because you've memorized God's word. You have allowed the filter to build up through memorization of his word. It's like putting a wall of protection around a city. In Psalms 119.11 it says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. David said this. I have hidden your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. He understood that by hiding God's word in his heart, that he wouldn't, be, he wouldn't be challenged. He wouldn't, he wouldn't get off focus. Focus wouldn't be removed. That he would still be focused on Christ, on God. He understood that. Memorizing scripture, I said that. It's so important. It's crucial for us to memorize scripture. When we are thinking heavenly, then what happens? When we're thinking heavenly, what happens? Or we have a lot to talk about. Oh, you want to answer? Oh, yeah, answer. Oh, you look at Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, I'm in a hard spot now. <laughs> when we focus heavenly, what happens? Our spirits rise. Our spirits rise. <laughs> praise the Lord. Okay, praise the Lord. <laughs> Dominic, what's up, brother? When we focus heavenly, what happens? Exactly. We get peace. We get fulfillment. We get holiness, right? We get this. It's a choke lock. That doesn't work. <laughs> when we focus our minds heavenly, we have created a barrier. We have created a wall to protect us from the distractions. <laughs> because when we're continually focusing on things above, there's no way that we can focus on what's going on here on earth. See, when our heads are lifted high, but metaphorically, because you'll run into everything if you're looking up all the time. When our spirits are, are focused upward, when our spirits are focused upward, we won't be distracted by what we can see at eye level. We won't be distracted by it. That's why it's so important for us to be thinking of heavenly things, so important for us to be focused upward. Because when we are focused here, we get distracted. And distraction is easy. It's quick. A lot of you are crazy ADHD, DDY, PLOG. I don't even know what else it is. I mean, you can't even go 10 minutes without being like, <sighs> you know? <laughs> I mean, you're real twitchers. No. We need to be focused on things that are heavenly. We're going to wrap this up because we've got to get into small groups. <laughs> Guys, by, by creating a web, by creating a web with God's word, by creating a web with memorization of God's word. And that's why it's important. You don't have a Bible, pick one up. Don't be embarrassed. We'll give it up for free. Take it. It's a gift from me to you. It's important for us to memorize God's word. I'm not saying that you need to memorize a new verse every day. But even if you memorize three verses in a whole year, that's better than not memorizing anything. And it's important for us to do that. I'm not saying you got to go and memorize the longest verse of the Bible. Jesus wept. <laughs> Jesus wept. And if you sin, Jesus will weep. 
See? Ooh, yeah. your applause. Anyways. <laughs> Got you there, didn't I? That was easy, huh? It's the easiest verse to read. And then uh, memorize. Anyways. What verse is that? <laughs> I don't know. I just knew it was Jesus wept. Well. Shh. 1135. Of what chapter? I mean, of what book? John. John. Tom doesn't count. He was like, Tom doesn't count. <laughs> Tom, you don't count. Shh. All right, we got to break up into our small groups. But I want you to keep focus on that. Shh. I want you to keep focus on that. You guys need to build those webs. And through that, and, and in order to build those webs, it's by memorization. And it's influences. I really want you guys to t take a check of what you're listening to. I'm not telling you how to stop listening to it right now. But really, go and look at what you're listening to. Go and pay attention to what you're watching. Go and, and, and observe the influences that are on your life. And ask yourself, is this really worth it? Is this distraction really worth it for me? Is it worth death? Is it worth death? Because the ungodly, the ungodliness leads to death. Where godliness leads to what? Peace. Life. Peace. Peace. Exactly. Salvation.